new environment. Storage once where it was, you do OEM deals, it holds data, but now it's, an, it's the linchpin of cloud with virtualization. Talk about what that means. I mean, HP has a breadth of resources across the board, portfolio of technologies. One little ingredient like storage where data is involved. Talk about some of the things that people are missing in the analysis. Um, the synergies, as they would say, if someone's doing you know, that. Not in specific detail, but the big picture. What are people missing when they think of storage as just, oh, price X, vendor A. What does that picture look like? And, and can you, can you dig, dig deeper, Paul? Yeah, well maybe Paul, you want to start and I'll, I'll join. Yeah, I'll start, and, and Dave had asked about vision as well. So if you look at the plate tectonics, there, there's two big shifts in the market, right? One of them is the unrelenting growth, especially of unstructured data. The, the other plate tectonic is the acceleration in uh, server virtualization, right? The fault line where those two things meet is storage. And um, so from that angle, storage is, um, it, the biggest barrier to adoption of private cloud and, and virtualized environments is the cost and complexity of shared storage. So at a high level, what we're doing is we're making that simple, we're making that cheap, we're turning um, an exposure into an acceleration factor. And data playing a role in it, latency, mobile devices, well, all this stuff. It, it, I mean. Absolutely, and, and what happens is, it, it, the old model was taking data and piping it through a network to make it available to applications. The new model is bring the virtualized apps to coincide with the data and run it there. It's a lot more efficient, it's a lot higher performance. It's a complete rethinking of the network. And so the disruptive enabler of that is virtualization. Right. And I think what people are missing, what you're saying is that storage is now fundamentally like a server and networking in one. Is that, that that's, that's one way to think about it. And I think by bringing these elements together with a simpler management paradigm, you know, which we've done, makes it much more cost effective. And I think one of the other things to think about is what's, you know, historically we've had network administrators, storage administrators, database administrators, server administrators, and if you look at what this new world looks like, you know, it becomes an infrastructure administrator at some point in time where it's a different view. And what you're doing is focusing on what are the policies, what are the use cases, how do we want to protect the data, Air traffic how control. many copies. It doesn't matter what plane they're landing, it's, you know, it's stuff that yeah, they're doing. Yeah, so it's very, very different. And I think some of the customers are waking up to this and saying our IT organization needs to have some additional or different skills yeah. going yeah. forward. And Paul. so it's, it's a different, well, you providing mentioned exposure, and exposure becomes an accelerant in the new Absolutely. model, which is really great. Talk about security then, I mean, because obviously security has been one of the other points of barriers, uh, uh, adoption issues with, uh, with cloud. Any, any comment, uh, how, do you, well, how is that going to be? Security is important, and you know, HP touches security in many different ways, shapes, and forms. We have a very broad security set of capabilities. I think our tipping point software, for example, that we uh, picked up with the 3Com acquisition is one of the leading uh, network intrusion uh, softwares. So that's a great example of taking security seriously. It is important, and you know every customer cares about it. Particularly in the financial services world, they care a lot about it. But everyone cares about. Can their you data. talk about your multi-vendor? Because you guys play in all the environments. I mean, HP's the 800-pound gorilla with your uh, EDS uh, force out there, and right. you know, then just the portfolio is just massive and, and impressive. You know, you got to deal with open source, you got to deal with you know, existing legacy. What's the general philosophy at HP around that? I mean, obviously open source with Hadoop on the data side and you got mobility now and you guys have that product there. Yeah, well I think, and if, and if I understand your question, I think one of our fundamental building blocks is an open standard based architecture so that people are not locked into a particular answer, a particular uh, vendor, so that the legacy in our mind needs to work with the new, and so you can't tell a customer, okay, you know all that stuff you bought over the last five years, throw it away, so you can use the new stuff, and because number one, they can't there. afford it. And virtualization plays there, you can do Absolutely, things. so let's virtualize it, bring it into the new world, and over time, you transition from the old to the new, and that's, that's our view of it, but it has to be based on open standards, you can't, well you can, but the customers usually don't accept it. Yeah. And that's one of the questions we get as HP is, gee, you know, 
we can buy everything from you, but does that yeah. place us at risk? My answer is absolutely not, because we're based on open standards. You can replace any piece you want along the way. You can't put a Dell blade in an HP blade chassis, but you can certainly connect other storage to our servers or our servers to other storage. There's no inability to do so, that. So you guys had the Pro Curve division, you got uh, 3Com in there, the storage is changing, you guys got some innovation coming out, hopefully gets out, you know, and the new new deals coming down. How is that Converge organization going? What's the what's, what's the feeling there? People energized and, and uh, you know, now that HP's got, uh, you know, a path ahead of them? Uh, I, well, I, I can just talk about my part of the organization, but certainly the engineers are more excited than they've been in a long time. We're investing in R&D, we're actually spending more than we were before, which is, you know, if you're an engineer, what do you want? More money for your projects. And at the same time, we've introduced, I think, uh, strong accountability. It's one thing to have more money, but if you don't produce better products with it, then you really haven't accomplished anything. I think, you know, Dave Donatelli has brought us a great combination as a leader of, okay, here's some more money, but here's what I'm going to hold you accountable for in delivering to the market with that money. Very clear accountability. Uh, and yet we're investing more, which to me is, as an engineer, as an engineering team, that's what you want. That's exciting. Dave, you want any final comments? No, I just uh, like this quick summary. I mean, we're seeing, as I said, the transformation of HP Storage Works business, um, focused on taking commodity components and adding value through software, giving your systems the different personalities. We're seeing innovation out of HP Labs with StoreOnce. Um, we're seeing you bring together a lot of pieces in the portfolio driving your value chain hard, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch. Paul Perez and Dave Robeson, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate thanks, that. Dave. Thanks, John. We'll be Appreciate right back with SiliconAngle.com. SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of VMworld 2010 with theCUBE, where we're broadcasting live at the Moscone.